Welcome to the webinar for importing products of animal origin from the European Union into Great Britain. The webinar will cover the up and coming changes to importing, steps traders need to take in order to be ready for the new requirements, an insight into what those requirements are, the policies behind them, and some key steps you can start to undertake now ahead of October 2021. Beginning with reasons for change, let's recap on why we find ourselves here today. The UK has left the EU single market and customs union and Her Majesty's government is responsible for protecting the UK's biosecurity. This means we need to ensure products that enter the United Kingdom are safe, of quality, and don't pose any health risks to citizens. As you're probably aware, the new import controls are being introduced in a phased way. And earlier this year, some new requirements were introduced. The next set of requirements will come into force from the 1st of October, 2021, and then the 1st of January, 2022 thereafter. From October the 1st, 2021, products imported into Great Britain must meet both customs, sanitary and phytosanitary requirements. These SPS controls apply on certain products to protect the nation's biosecurity and to control disease. An updated border operating model was published in July this year, which provides detailed information on how the import Ports regime will work. Before we move into the detail around up and coming controls for October, we want to be clear on what we mean when we say products of animal origin. These are products for human consumption and include, but not limited to the following food groups. Meat, and there are a number of examples on the slide, egg and egg products, milk and milk products, honey gelatine and gelatine products. Let's move on to October. What's changing? From the 1st of October, there will be new changes for products of animal origin and animal byproducts. These animal byproducts will need to be pre notified on the import of products animal food and feed system, also known as IPAFs, and they will need to be accompanied by a certified export health certificate to enable documentary checks to be carried out. The following slides will cover these changes in further detail. We will now take you through the process the exporter must follow to send goods to Great Britain. The exporter will need to ensure goods meet GB import requirements as outlined in the export health certificate. The competent authority has been contacted and steps have been taken to enable the certification and inspection of goods that an electronic copy of the certified health certificate has been sent to the importer and that the original copy and all other supporting documentation travels with the consignment. There are also actions for the importer prior to goods entering Great Britain. The importer should obtain an EORI number, check the business exporting the goods has met their requirements, ensure customs declarations are carried out. These can be made by the importer or an agent can be hired to do this on their behalf. Source the relevant commodity codes, ensure the value of the goods is known, find out if you can reduce or delay duty payments, check the labeling, marking and marketing standards rules. As well as obtain an electronic copy of the export health certificate from the exporter, Raise a pre-notification on IPAFs prior to the arrival at the border. This can be done by an agent acting on the importer's behalf. Upload the electronic copy of the export health certificate to the IPAFs notification and be prepared for remote documentary checks to be carried out. Get your goods through customs, claim a VAT refund, claim for any rejected goods, and finally keep a record of invoices. Pre-notifying your goods. The retained official control regulations set the framework for border checks and pre-notification requirements. From October 2021, traders must pre-notify the arrival of consignments using IPAFs. Goods must be pre-notified 24 hours prior to the arrival at the point of entry. Where logistical constraints prevent pre-notification 24 hours in advance of arrival, a derogation can be applied, allowing traders to pre-notify less than 24 hours 
but no less than four hours prior to arrival. Individual port health authorities can apply the derogation and set pre-notification times between 24, four hours, according to the local circumstances. To summarize, the pre-notification requirements are, the consignment must have been pre-notified in advance of goods entering Great Britain. Pre-notification could only be raised via IPAFs. In order to do this, you must have registered for an IPAFs account. Port health authorities should be contacted to determine pre-notification timescales. Moving on to export health certificates. All POAO coming into Great Britain from the EU from the 1st of October must be accompanied by a certified export health certificate. The export health certificate is issued to the EU exporter by the competent authority in the exporting country, in line with Great Britain's import requirements. The exporter must provide the importer with an electronic copy of the certified export health certificate. The exporter must ensure the original export health certificate travels with the consignment. It is the importer's responsibility to upload the copy of the export health certificate to the import of product animal food and feed system, known as IPAFs. You should speak with the EU exporter to make certain they are prepared to obtain an export health certificate. Copies of the model alpha Export health certificates are available on gov.uk so you can familiarise yourself with the requirements. Now we're going to talk about the import of product, animals, food and feed system referred to as IPAFs. IPAFs is the IT system that enables GB importers to notify the relevant authorities of the arrival of goods that are subject to SPS controls. On the 1st of October, all POAO arriving from the EU will need to be pre-notified via IPAFs. As the importer, it is your responsibility to ensure you have pre-notified the arrival of goods in advance. You should ensure the EU exporter has provided you with an electronic copy of the Certified Export Health Certificate and that a copy of the certificate has been uploaded to the notification. This process allows for remote documentary text to take place. You will need to register for an IPAFs account via the government gateway ID and please be aware that the first person to register will become the administrative owner and any notification raised on IPAFs must be made by the person responsible for the load. IPAFs. This section provides a breakdown of the information you need to include on your notification. You will need what you're importing, the date of import into Great Britain, which country it will come from, the consignment's place of destination. We would like to note that between October 2021 and December 2021, importers will be required to submit a simplified notification on IPATS, also known as an IMP notification. Then from January 2022, this notification will change and additional details will be required. Documentary checks. Documentary checks will be taking place from October and these will be conducted remotely and goods will be able to enter Great Britain through any point of entry. We are now going to cover some slides on specific subjects. Importing fish, IUU requirements. Since the 1st of January, 2021, imports of most fish from the EU have required IUU documents. This can include a catch certificate, processing statements, proof of storage documents. These documents must have been completed by the exporter, validated by the competent authority, and then provided to the importer. The importer must then send these to the appropriate Port Health Authority at the port of arrival. Fishing products. All third country fishing vessels are required to land into appropriately designated ports and submit the relevant port state control form if catching in the Northeast Atlantic Fisheries Commission convention area. Third country fishing vessels landing fresh fish into Great Britain are also required to submit a prior notification form, pre-landing declaration, complete and validate catch certificate and adhere to customs formalities. Third country food approved vessels landing frozen or processed fish will also need to 
pre-notify on IPAS and submit a captain's certificate from the 1st of October and land into a point of entry with a designated BCP from the 1st of January, 2022. More guidance on RUU controls is available on gov.uk. Composites. Composite products are food containing both processed products of animal origin and products of plant origin, and where the processing of the primary product is an integral part of the production of the final product. For example, this could be a sausage roll, mayonnaise, or a lasagna ready meal. Imports of these goods must be pre-notified and accompanied by an export health certificate from October 2021, unless otherwise exempt. Some goods are exempt if they contain less than 50% processed animal product, no meat product, and they meet the requirements set out in legislation. In, if your goods contain any meat product or more than 50% animal product, it must be accompanied by a certificate, an export health certificate, and follow the phased approach set out for POAO. Marketing standards. The marketing standards requirements are from October, marketing standards controls will be introduced for Class B eggs imported into Great Britain. This slide contains the detail on those controls and how they will be carried out. Groupage. Groupage is defined as the commercial grouping of multiple consignments within a single sealed trailer or container. Engagement is underway to determine the best process and outcome regarding groupage inspection process. And currently there are three models under review. Consolidation hub, single lorry seal, sequential single lorry seal, and linear multiple pallet seals. High-risk food not of animal origin. From the 1st of October 2021, all high-risk food not of animal origin on the EU market export imported to Great Britain must be pre-notified on IPAPS, can continue to enter Great Britain via any entry point, and will not be subject to any import checks. Generally, food and feed not of animal origin can be imported from anywhere in the world unless there are restrictions. It is those restrictions that make a product high risk food or feed of non-animal origin. A list can be found on the Food Standards Agency website. Here we capture the up and coming changes from January the 1st, 2022. As you can see, identity and physical checks will be introduced for products of animal origin, animal byproducts, germinal products. We will provide more information on the January changes throughout autumn. Thank you for your time.